Okay gang, so if you can think back to the alcohol derivatives video series, when we talked about epoxides, we, I showed you guys how to attack them, but I didn't necessarily show you guys how to even make them. And now, if that was kind of, you know, keeping you for, you know, like keeping your attention, now we can actually talk about how to make them. And it's super easy. So, again, this is the alkenes unit, so you, if you can take a wild guess, we make epoxides from alkenes. So, if I were to take this alkene right here, this cyclohexene, and if I were to treat it with something called MCPBA, which you guys do not need to know what it is, it's a big uh, aromatic structure, what we get is that cyclic ether that we attacked you know, in acidic and basic environments a couple of videos, uh, videos ago. So, again, remember, this is a ring, so your epoxide is on one side of the ring, so you'll get an equal distribution of this wedge right here, or if you decide to flip your ring over, you could also draw your epoxide like this. It doesn't matter, wedges or dashes, as long as you both have two wedges or two dashes. Okay? So let me kind of erase this. We'll do like, actually I won't erase it. We'll just do like another quick little one. So let's say I had propene, right? I threw in some good old MCPBA, right? So what I like to do is I like to take my two carbons apart of the alkene. I usually draw it straight. And then, you know, I'll draw either two wedges or two dashes, whatever I'm in the mood for. And then just make sure you fill in the groups appropriately, right? A part of one of these, doesn't matter which carbon you pick, but there was a methyl group coming off, right? So just draw him like that. Okay, so not a big deal at all, right? But while we're talking about epoxides, I want to highlight one feature of epoxides that are kind of, it's kind of applicable to this video series. Okay, so if you remember, if we're going to rehash, you can attack epoxides in acidic conditions, acid conditions, and as well in base, right? Okay, so... Here's what I want to kind of highlight to you guys. I think the exact example we did was something along these lines. We had a wedged epoxide, and up top we had a dashed methyl group, and we had an OH minus. We had a basic environment with just OH minus and H2O. Here's what I want to kind of highlight. Remember, when you're in base, we think about attacking the carbon that is least sterically hindered. So you can clearly see this, this is the carbon we'll attack because we, there's that extra methyl group up top. Here's what I want to talk about. When we attack with this hydroxide, right, we come from underneath, right? This is wedged, so this OH will be dashed, and our product looks like this. On the bottom carbon, this OH came from underneath the ring, backside attack, he has a dash, the methyl group stays dashed because we didn't touch him. And now, remember, after our cleanup step, because as soon as we attack, this becomes an O minus, but we'll protonate, and this OH becomes, stays a wedge. Here's what I want to talk about. Remember when we did hydrogenation, that was what was called a syn addition, same side. Now, I know we've used the word anti before, but do you see how we had a group here that is still the way it is, right? It's still a wedge. The group we added is on the opposite side of the ring, or the opposite side of where the epoxide started. If we're going to compare these two groups with each other, the group we added versus the group we kind of made from the attack, they're on opposite sides of the ring. This is called an anti-addition. Now, I know this is conf a little weird, confusing, because anti is used twice in this video series. It can refer to adding a group to the least substituted carbon in a double bond, but, but it can also refer to adding groups to different sides of a ring. So I just want to make that super clear. Syn addition, right? Think of hydrogenation. You're adding two groups to the same side, right? They have the same stereochemistry, two wedges, two dashes, either one. 
Anti-addition, this can mean you add, you add or produce two groups that are on the opposite sides. They have opposite stereochemistry as far as wedges and dashes. But anti-addition can also mean adding something to a least substituted position in a double bond. Okay, a little strange, but I do have a problem like this on a worksheet in the future, so I just want to kind of really talk through it with you guys in this video. So that's really what does it for epoxides. Just remember, all you need to give to an alkene to make it an epoxide is that special reagent MCPBA, no mechanism, and then just a rehash of you look for the least sterically hindered carbon to attack an epoxide in base, but in acid it's the more sterically hindered carbon because that carbon is the more stable carbocation through resonance. Okay, hopefully you guys are staying organized. I know this is a lot of information. I'm not expecting you to just watch a video and know everything, right? It takes practice, it takes some studying, but I know that as long as you guys just use the resources I have here on Joe Chem and whatever you have in your book and notes from class, you'll be fine. So let's talk about just two more reactions and we're finally done with this unit.